Welcome back. This time we're talking about The Little Prince, which finally received its English language release this past Friday on Netflix. This film, which is an animated adaptation of the 1943 novel by French author Antoine de Saint-Exupéry, has a production history as interesting as the film itself is beautiful and emotional. Now before I get into the film itself, which I thoroughly enjoyed, let's talk a little bit about how this got to Netflix. And I have to say, its production history is strange from the beginning. This is a French production with an American director, Mark Osborne, who was one of the directors on the original Kung Fu Panda, as well as the live-action director for the original um, SpongeBob SquarePants movie. Now, as best I can tell from reading up on this movie, this was a passion project for director Mark Osborne, and when it got time to cast the English voice cast, he personally went out and pitched it to a bunch of A-list actors, many of which that ultimately um, joined, the, joined the film. So the English dub was actually done first, followed by the French version. Now, it's the second version that was released last year um, in France, and a number of other territories, as well as making its debut at the 2015 Cannes Film Festival. It would go on to earn almost $100 million, becoming France's highest grossing animated film of all time. The English language dub made its debut at a film festival, I think in January, and was set for a wide release in March, only for Paramount to pull it from its release schedule a week before it was supposed to debut in theaters. To date, there's still no explanation of why that happened. Ultimately, it was, a, it was announced that Netflix had acquired the rights, and this past Friday, it was released. Now, the original story from the novella, which I have to say I have not read, um, is about this aviator who crashes into the desert, and it happens across this young boy called the Little Prince. And this boy um, is very odd, and he ultimately tells him the story of how he lives on this asteroid B612 and the journey that he takes from there that ultimately led him to this desert on Earth. Now that story is within this movie, but it's actually told as a story within the story by the aviator who is now an old man. Um, the primary protagonist of the story is this young girl whose mother is one of those helicopter parents but from afar. Um, she has planned out her daughter's life um, literally to the minute um, from present to adulthood and how she's going to become a successful adult by just striving for it every second of the day. But she also has to work, so she leaves her daughter there to basically run her life and prepare to enter this high-end um, academy. Their next-door neighbor is the aviator. The young girl is intrigued by the, the just craziness that surrounds this man and his house and and ultimately he starts telling her this story of the Little Prince. Um, the best analogy I could give as far as the structure of this movie would be Illumination Entertainment's um, version of the Lorax, where you had a present-day story that ultimately collides with the character from the actual Lorax story, and that story is told in flashback. Here the story is told in story form, but it's implied that it's very possible that it could actually have happened to the aviator. There's, um, they do a good job of leaving it up to the audience to decide. And I have to say, as a story, as a whole, these two stories, the, the Little Prince story and the Little Girl story, they parallel each other very well thematically. And it's the story of just the, the, the fear of adulthood and what it means to children and what children will have to give up to become adults. And Osborne and his crew, they delineate these two stories by the, the present day story of the little girl being told in, in traditional, now, um, 3D animation, while the little prince's story is told in stop motion animation um, using paper uh, figures and backgrounds. And, and in both cases, it's beautiful, but I have to say that the, the, the stop motion especially is, is immensely beautiful. Um, what they're able to do with, with paper and, and have that kind of mystical feel while also feeling like a child telling the story. Um, it's just, it, it's beautiful. And then the, the CG animation, I mean, it's not the photorealistic that we get sometimes with like Pixar, but that's not the point of this. Um, the, the animation here perfectly fits the story they're trying to tell. 
And that story is immensely emotional on a number of levels. As I said, the, the, the themes that this, as the little prince um, and what he faces along his journey and what he's trying to accomplish and what he's trying to avoid um, very much parallels what the little girl is dealing with. Um, basically being told that she has no time to be a child. She has to prepare to be this adult. And what she sees of adulthood, she doesn't want, but that's all she's been told. 2016 has been in a, has been a great year for animation. We had Zootopia, which is, is a, two, up until now has been my favorite animated film of the year. Um, we had Finding Dory, um, which I would say is a great second tier Pixar film. Um, and then we've had a, a smattering of others of, of varying success, and now we have The Little Prince. And I have to say now, this is my favorite animated film of, of 2016. It's visually beautiful, it's emotionally resonant, um, has a great voice cast, which I haven't even gotten to yet. We have Jeff Bridges, Rachel McAdams, Marion Cotillard, Paul Rudd, James Franco, Ricky Gervais, and Benicio Del Toro. So this is a film I can highly recommend. Um, it's, it's definitely a heavy kids movie, if you want to consider it a kids movie. The themes are rather mature, um, dealing with this um, idea of, of, of the impending adulthood. Um, there's also a second theme that's um, really well handled. Um, I don't want to get into it because it might be a little bit of a spoiler. Um, but they do just do a, such a good job of paralleling these two stories through the first two acts of this film. And then we get to this third act. I mean, again, I don't want to spoil anything, but that's where they kind of, you know, they kind of, the two stories sort of converge, and we have this new, almost adventure that's happening. And like a lot of this, um, what's actually happening during this third act is really left up to interpretation. So I don't like to underestimate children, but I'm not a parent. I don't have kids. I will say I think the younger audiences might get a little bored because I think some of the themes might go over their heads. But I really think this is a story that I think families can enjoy. I think adults can definitely enjoy, even if you don't have kids. Definitely worth watching. But I do think children will get will get a lot out of this as well. So yeah, this is definitely, like I said, my favorite animated film of the year so far. And, and really one of my favorite films. Um, I can't believe this did not get a theatrical release. As wonderful as it was to see, I can't imagine what it would have been like to see it on, on the big screen. Um, so that is a bit of a disappointment. But if you have Netflix, it's about an hour and 40 minutes. Um, you don't have to worry about a, a 10 hour binge or anything. This is something that I, I highly recommend. Go watch it. I'm pretty sure you're going to enjoy it. So if you have seen The Little Prince, let me know what you thought. Um, and especially if you've read the book, like I have not. I, um, I'm curious what you felt of the adaptation. Um, one of my best friends, he's a huge fan of this book, um, has not had a chance to watch it yet, so I'm still waiting to hear his response. Um, as always, you can subscribe to my channel, check out some of my other reviews, and until next time, I'll see you at the movies or on Netflix.